Thanks everyone for joining us today on Saturday afternoon to find out why your photographs are important and why it's important that you contribute to such competitions as Wiki Loves Africa, but there are also other Wiki based competitions like Wiki Loves Earth and Wiki Loves Love and Wiki Loves Monuments. This presentation will show you why it's important and why this, this photography competition is specific to Africa. So my name is Ayla Hedo Flood. Um, I'm a co-founder of Wiki Loves Africa with Florence de Wad or Aunt Hare, as you might know her, and we're both uh, project managers on the continental level. I'm based in South Africa, but I was born in Zimbabwe, and you can get hold of me via all of those other elements here. Um, this comp this um, presentation or this slide, this webinar, will, the slides from the webinar will be available both on um, commons, but also uh, the link will be available to you at the end of the webinar in the chat. So you can uh, pick up the links and more information there. What are we going to present to you today? So first of all, what is Wiki Loves Africa? For those who don't know it or don't know enough about it, um, we're going to just walk through uh, why this contest is so interesting and important, sorry, and why you should contribute or consider contributing your images to Wiki Loves Africa. Then we're gonna hear from one of the photographers who um, is also a winner. She won last year, one of the prizes last year, Summer from Egypt. Uh, we're gonna talk about how you can contribute. We're gonna um, talk about the considerations that you must know about around copyright. Uh, we're also going to talk about what are the other benefits of being involved, including community? And Candy from Botswana is going to talk about that. Um, also joining us is Joffrey from Uganda. And at the end, then we will have um, questions and answers. So uh, you'll have your time to ask those questions uh, when you can. So what is Wiki Loves Africa? So Wiki Loves Africa challenges the negative depiction of Africa that many of us encounter um, by encouraging and developing a community of African creatives, um, specifically photographers, filmmakers, and cultural practitioners to celebrate Africa by submitting photographs and media to one of the world's largest knowledge platforms, Wikipedia. Um, and Wiki Lives Africa specifically is an annual photographic Africa-wide contest. We've had six contest competitions held so far. Um, it started in 2014. And every year there's a different theme, a theme that is both universal but culturally specific. And they have ranged from um, cuisine to fashion to music to play to work, and then this year is transport or Africa on the move. Um, it celebrates Africa. It celebrates um, the diversity and the myriad of different realities that exist across the con continent and it's continent wide in protocols. So nobody is left out. On the right hand side of the slide, you can see that there's, um, these are the organizations or the teams, the volunteer teams that currently are working on um, events or uh, motivating people to join Wiki Loves Africa. But it doesn't mean that we don't have, uh, we don't have people entering from the darker spaces, so the brown, dark brown spaces. Those countries, it just means that there aren't events happening within those spaces, specific um, teams organizing events, but we're still, people are still contributing from there. It also encourages local events to support and build a local community. Um, and there's also prize money. This year, the prize money totals 3,300 US dollars. So Wiki Loves Africa was created to change the way that Africa is seen on global knowledge platforms such as Wikipedia. Uh, when people read uh, um, articles, they are more likely to read longer if there are images that support what they're reading about. And their idea of how um, the image, their idea of how that subject is, is often influenced by the type of image that is represented. So if you have drum 
being only represented by um, a military drum from, uh, from America, then that's a different idea of how um, the idea of a talking drum or a drum that is used to uh, communicate along, across far distances or a drum that is used for celebration. Um, so in this way, we also try to rebalance how day-to-day -day subjects um, are depicted and give African examples um, in order for universal subjects. It provides easy access for creatives from across Africa uh, to a global platform um, and it's a way of um, decolonizing the mind in uh, encouraging people from different perspectives and different ideas and thoughts and um, processes to share their experience but also their passion and their pride and their, their own cultural heritage. And it develops and links um, the creative and knowledge contributors across Africa through a shared purpose. So because everyone is contributing to Wiki Loves Africa, it also means that they're talking amongst themselves. Uh, so we have com conversations between Nigeria and Uganda or um, Egypt and South Africa. Um, and that also is an exciting thing to happen. And it rewards people for contributing quality material to Wikimedia projects. It also um, gives people the opportunity to um, celebrate their own heritage, uh, traditions, cultures, and it validates their reality. So it makes sure that people, their different perspectives can be seen and uh, are valued as well. So what has been achieved so far? Uh, we've had over 56,000 images have been donated by over 7,000 sub, um, submitters or um, people who have entered. We, our images have been viewed 15.9 um, million times each month, are viewed 15.9 million times each month. And uh, images are viewed since the beginning of Wiki Loves Africa, the images have been viewed um, 389, well, nearly 390 million times altogether. So that's, there's a lot of people, um, there are a lot of people who have seen these images and uh, it's also important that um, more people see them so that they become more useful. Um, there are communi Wikimedia communities, which are basically volunteer groups, uh, people who are uh, impassioned by being part of the community or by taking photographs and then seeing the value in it. Um, and you will meet some of those today. Uh, and they are running um, volunteer groups across Africa that then have developed into Wikimedia communities. Um, over 250 participation and events have, have been held. Uh, those, of course, at the moment are on, on a hiatus or participation has been suspended because of the COVID um, crisis. But that's why we're holding um, online participation events like the one you're experiencing now. The competition attracts high levels of new contributors. Um, and that's one of the things that uh, we're very proud of. Almost um, on average, uh, over 81% of all contributors are brand new to Wikimedia, so we are bringing new people in all the time. Um, Wiki Loves Africa prize-winning images have also been featured on um, an exhibition such as the UNESCO exhibition in Paris. Um, and the Wiki Loves Africa team developed the ESA tool, which last year won um, Best Multimedia um, tool at Wikidata last year um, and it was part of the structured data on Commons, um, Wikimedia Commons. ESA is, uh, was developed in order to make the images more useful by adding descriptions onto, um, onto the images that could also then be used. So um, if it was a picture say of a fisherman then it could also be used in an image not only for the article on fishermen, it also could be used for water or for boat or for um, handcrafted um, vessel or something like that. So it allows for um, 
uh, a better developed sense of what the image can present. This year, the theme is every year we theme um, the competition. This year, it's transport. Last year was play. And um, we have asked um, the winners to why they took certain pictures. And you can see that the reasons why photographers get involved are because um, of the, the story behind the photograph. So uh, in the case of this image, which uh, to your left was the, the award-winning image uh, for last year, the, the win award-winning photographer, Marco, said that it was, um, the image was striking because Sudan's government waged a bombing campaign against the civilians it accused of supporting the Nubian rebels and uh, the cheap shrapnel bombs were dropped out of Antonov cargo planes. And then he saw these children playing on these very, these very um, uh, planes that were actually meant being sent out to do damage to them and to kill them. So this kind of like juxtaposition of um, playing on things that were had a malicious intent was what he was wanting to capture. In this case, um, in 2017, we did uh, People at Work, and you can see these amazing images that came out of it. The women with seaweed on the left-hand side, they were, um, that was the award-winning one, the first prize. But the second prize with the guy with the shark in Mogadishu, he, it's the same photographer who won last year's. So he came back again um, and gave us another startling image. The person who won um, the prize for the farming seaweed wanted to represent how many women in rural coastal communities were um, completely dependent on their husbands for livelihoods and basically then changed that dynamic by um, creating their own industry through seaweed. Um, and that's, I think, an amazing uh, reflection of how perceptions can be changed by an image. In 2000, and it's also um, images or being part of, the, of Wiki Loves Africa has also altered how people um, view themselves as photographers. So in 2016, the winner of the San image to the left, um, Kevin Rack, he said he basically uh, by winning, it inspired him to work harder. He did an, an advanced photographic choice uh, course, sorry, and then he then joined a film crew in Botswana to continue the work that he had started doing. So it allowed him to kind of change his life. Um, and we have, as you can see, um, had cultural fashion and adornments and cuisine as well, which are all the uh, images. These are the winning images that we had. So part of contributing to, um, as a photographer, part of contributing to Wiki Loves Africa means that you must consider uh, what license you should choose. So for part of um, considering going to, uh, contributing to create to Commons, Wikimedia Commons, um, you have to choose a Creative Commons license, where well, the license is pretty much chosen for you. Um, and this is one of the reasons why Creative Commons licenses, um, they give you the, they allow you to shift from an all rights reserved to some rights reserved. So you can choose what kinds of images you want. Joffrey is going to be talking about that just now. And as a photographer, why should you contribute? your images to Wiki Loves Africa or indeed any other Wiki Loves competition. The reasons why we think this is important is that so you can tell a story that is not often shown on a global platform. Uh, you can celebrate or share the, with the world what you see in a way that you see it with millions of other people. Uh, your images are attributed directly to you. You can alter how people around the world and on the continent view Africa. And you can also, by using CC licenses, you decide how you want your image to be used. 
Uh, Summer was a winner in last year's competition. I've asked her to say a few wo words about her experience um, and how she came to. She's now also um, helping with the community building in Egypt. So uh, I'd like to sh push it over to Summer. Summer, are you there? Here. Yeah. Hi, would you like to present to everyone? Okay. Hi. Uh, hello, every, uh, everyone. Uh, please uh, excuse me for uh, my bad English. Uh, first, I heard about the contest from the internet through uh, some of my photographer friends who won the previous uh, contests. I know them uh, personally as they uh, sharing their winning photos on their uh, Facebook page. Also, when I entered the contest link, I know that the prizes are valuable and deserve to participate uh, in the contest. Uh, <clears throat> at the, at uh, first, uh, participation in the contest was a bit confusing and difficult, but uh, after several uh, attempts and uh, after I asked a friend, I was able to uh, partici uh, participate. Uh, actually, some positive things happened to me after I got the award. I received the prize and some gifts that uh, represents a very uh, beautiful memory for me. In addition, this was the most important award I got. I gained a lot of uh, confidence in myself. I was able to uh, choose uh, the right photos to present in the next competition. In fact, I won many, uh, I won, uh, many competitions after the wiki contest. The most important thing is that uh, I feel proud among my friends and photographers because I got an international award as important as the wiki and have uh, become more uh, popular among photographers. Then uh, many of them were interested in asking me about this uh, contest and if they if the prize money uh, was actually sent to me. Thank you, Summer. Um, Thank you. Joffrey, can you um, speak further about um, the process of contributing? Yeah, thank you, um, Ayla. Thank you, Summer. So, um, how do you contribute uh, to Wiki Loves Africa? Um, like Ayla has mentioned, it's a photographic contest, but also you are contributing to um, Wikimedia Commons. So the process is quite simple. Um, you take some photos, and uh, those photos have to be on the theme uh, for that particular year. Um, so the theme for this year is transportation, um, Africa on the move. So, um, yeah, take photos, um, select the best ones. Uh, why? Because quality really matters. You have seen some of the winning photos for the past year. They're really nice photos. So quality is also very important. Try to take good pictures. Um, register on Commons. So to be able to um, upload your photos, I have to have an account on Wikimedia Commons. So uh, register and there you'll have um, an upload wizard uh, where you can uh, enter by uploading your photos. Uh, we'll share the link to the um, to the upload uh, wizard at, uh, at the end of the slides. Um, but as you upload your photos, also you have to uh, try to understand the uh, the rules of the competition. And um, I'll talk about that on the next slide. Um, so, um, yeah, there are a few rules which you should uh, be aware of. Number one, um, 
all the photos must be taken uh, by the person submitting uh, them. Uh, so this is very important, um, especially because also we are going to talk about copyright. Um, so you have to own the photos that you upload. Um, number two, um, entries will only be accepted um, between February 15th and uh, up to 15th uh, April. So this is the duration of the contest. Um, it means uh, if you upload photos after 15th April, they will not be considered as part of the contest. Um, there are some people who have photos from, um, they have taken like in the previous years, but they are in line with uh, a particular year's theme. So you can always upload photos which you took um, uh, several years back but only during this time period for them to be considered during the contest. Um, so rule number three, participants must be uh, registered on Media Commons and be contactable. So uh, contactable, what this means is when you register for Wikimedia Commons, make sure you add your uh, email um, so that uh, yeah, you can be reached if your photo wins. Um, Images with watermarks and embedded signatures will not be uh, eligible. Um, so this is important because um, the photos are going to be licensed under Creative Commons attribution. Um, so uh, that's why we don't uh, encourage people to uh, add photos which have watermarks. We're going to talk about uh, uh, attribution and licenses a bit more. Um, rule number five, um, all photos and media will be categorized under the uh, images from Wikilabs Africa uh, 2020. So when you're uploading your photo, remember to add that category. Um, the upload wizard will help you to uh, add the category. Uh, yeah, but always check to make sure the category is there. Otherwise, it will be very hard to uh, Put your photo into the competition. Uh, rule number six, um, to be considered for the video prize, um, the file must be uploaded uh, in the video format, which is .ogg.ogvo.webm uh, that is required for Wikimedia Commons. So this is interesting because um, it means we don't only take photos, we also take um, video. Uh, and other types of media. So uh, yeah, but they have to be in that particular format. Uh, so licensing and attribution. Um, so we use a creative uh, commons uh, licenses um, and the creative commons licenses were uh, created to um, encourage uh, people to uh, remove restrictions, so to go away from all rights reserved to other um, licenses which are, are less uh, restrictive. So it's uh, all part of the uh, free knowledge uh, movement. And I'll just explain uh, the importance. So you can see um, the level of restriction um, increases, uh, decreases from uh, top to, uh, to bottom and uh, they the, the three on, on top are the ones that um, the free knowledge movement um, normally uh, uses. And I just want to go into a bit more detail on, on those. So um, the CC, that means Creative Commons. So uh, where you see CC uh, zero, um, that means uh, you're sharing without uh, any uh, restrictions. Um, the CC BY, um, that means you're sharing with attribution. Um, and then CC BY SA, uh, you're sharing, uh, you, are, you are doing attribution, but also you have to uh, share uh, using the same kind of uh, conditions. So the first three are the free culture licenses uh, that we normally go for. Um, I'm going to talk about those in more detail, but I'll just talk about the others um, quickly. So um, there is a BY, NC, and then SA. Um, that means 
is you are uh, attributing someone uh, who took the picture and it's non-commercial and also share alike. So NC is uh, non-commercial. Um, then there is uh, BY, NC, so still that is um, attribution and then non-commercial. And then there is ND, which is uh, non not deriva, uh, derivative. So you, you are not allowed to change and remix the, uh, uh, the, the use of the content that you are uh, using. So um, on the next slide, um, yeah, just want to talk about uh, those uh, attributions uh, in detail. So uh, CC, BY, so when you find um, a, a photo which is shared using CC, BY, that means Creative Commons attribution. Um, and what that really means is that use uh, it, use the photo uh, however you want, but attribute um, the work to the author uh, who created the work. Uh, and then the next one is Creative Commons attribution, uh, share alike. So CC, uh, then BY, which is attribution, and SA, which is uh, share alike, uh, which means use it uh, however you want, but attribute the work to the author. And if you change the work, uh, share your version under the same license. So this um, license allows you to modify the work, but when you share, you have to share it also with the same kind of condition. So you don't change it and then you make it commercial uh, if the initial one was uh, free. So you have to share it under the same uh, license. Uh, and then Creative Commons Zero, um, that is uh, completely free. So use it however you want. Um, yeah, just like the public uh, domain because it was shared in the public uh, domain. So um, yeah, in case you, are, you, want, you want to use someone's photo, how do you add the attribution? Um, how do you uh, really make sure that you have, uh, you, have kept, uh, you have used it in the right way? Um, so these are the types of ways uh, how people uh, attribute uh, photos. So the, uh, the minimal one is this. Um, where someone quotes um, the author and also the uh, the license. So um, by Raj Studio, Raj Studio is the person who uploaded the photo and quoting the license, which is by uh, share uh, attribution, share alike, which is 4.0. So that's a, a, an ex one example. Uh, the other one is um, attribution with author and the license source site. So um, what the difference here is that uh, there is a name of the author, but there's also a link to the license source. So by adding the, uh, the source, the license, it means someone can read more about the license so that they know, uh, they know more about how they do the sharing. Um, the next one is, uh, is the uh, ideal attribution. So this is the best way to, uh, to do attribution. Uh, you quote the author, uh, the person who uploaded the photo. Uh, also, you, you put a link to the license and also the link to the source file. So you have quoted the user, I mean the person who took the photo and uploaded it to Commons. You have put a link to the uh, Creative Commons license and also to the actual file uh, where you got it from. Um, so this is the ideal attribution. This, this is the best way to, to do it. And now can we have Candy please, who will tell us about um, the, why it's important or the, the benefits of um, building communities as well. Hi Candy, everyone. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Candy from Botswana. I'm a long term editor with Wikipedia. And um, I'll be sharing with you on what I do as an event organizer for Wiki Loves Africa here in Botswana. So what got me involved with Wikimedia 
uh, well movement. Um, firstly, it was introduced to me when I was still in varsity. So I got interested on how, I got curious on how to edit on Wikipedia and how articles get published on there. So I got into that competition and that's how my journey started and also got interested on how to contribute on open source platform. And this also helped me because I was also trying to learn on how to write articles, like how to perfect my skills within the editing and writing skills. And I'm also very passionate about women empowerment. So I was also planning to be a driving force to encourage women to have a voice within the um, wiki space. So I saw this as a good opportunity to join in. Next slide, please. Um, organizing Wiki Loves Africa. Um, why I why I am the event organizer for um, Wiki Loves Africa Botswana this year. Um, so one of my main aims is to create more content on Botswana transport on Wiki, and so that we could enhance existing articles on Wikipedia and also be able to create new content around that. So I saw this as a great opportunity to do, to do that and also bring together photographers so that we can learn and grow each other's skills. So, because um, there are very few spaces that I've seen where photographers have associations within my country. So I saw this as a very good opportunity to um, group them and place them in one place to grow their skills together and why I've also put together this is a good opportunity sorry to also bring and attract newbies to the community and with the last point there um, Wiki Loves Africa is giving us all the opportunity to um, give a platform to the marginalized groups and everyone who wants to join in can also come in and have that voice on there and edit and share whatever knowledge they have um, as long as it contributes and helps the next person. So I'm very um, happy that this platform is there. So yes, the next slide, please. Yes, this um, is one of the events that we had. Um, the first one, um, the first picture on there, this was the second event that we had, just activating everyone, just putting everyone under one space so that they can upload more pictures because most of the students here, they have problems with internet. So um, we always try, we were always trying to have weekly basis um, uploading days. So yes, um, and then that is us being celebrating our after event of uploading. Next slide. Yes, community benefits. So from my experiences as a long-term editor on Wikipedia, I got the opportunity to partner with other communities. Um, the importance of partnering, you may find out that um, you you get to, it, it easily helps you when you want to get sponsorship from other <coughs> communities. Um, with, with that being said, from my community, we got help from other community groups like um, um, Google, Google Developers Group here. They were able to facilitate one of our events with venue and help us with getting a venue for free. So it's always good to partner with other communities and not isolate yourself. Um, and then um, for, from my side at two, I'm also a beginner with the photography and um, that kind of sort. So I'm still growing and learning. So I feel I have enhanced my photography skills. And yes, this has also helped me to give me a sense of belonging to the community. So I am very happy to have some sort of purpose that I'm giving out and helping other people. And I'm also learning in that kind of platform. And the other point there is build more content or encyclopedia on Wikipedia. 
so which is good last point is to yes basically building relationships in the community learning from each other's experiences next slide please and lastly personal skills as i said i will i have benefited writing and editing skills which have helped me in my varsity days and then Yes, I, I think I'm still getting there. I'm intermediate, but it's still good. And photography skills, as I said. And public speaking, I think this has also helped me to gain more confidence to do public speaking and coordinating and event, organize, event organizing some events. So this can mold you professional-wise to gain more confidence and know how to plan events, to do budget planning, all those sorts of stuff. And lastly on there, um, I was able to um, network with one of my friends who I met with uh, within the space of a Wikipedia event that were also um, contributing to Mozilla, which I'm also contributing to. Um, so because I'm very passionate about open source, I was able to learn um, how to do tech speaking, um, do tech speaking. So I'm also collaborating and learning from other people from there. So you may never know what you could learn when you, <coughs> sorry, you may, you, so this is a good platform to kind of like coordinate yourself and learn and network from other people because you can learn different kinds of skills. Yes. Next slide. And down there you can see um, on the slide, you can see these are just some of the images that we have from Botswana that people have uh, currently um, have uploaded um, for the competition. So these are just random um, um, images. Next slide, please. So here is just the link. If you want to enter the competition and start uploading your images, you can um, go ahead and use this link. And if you want to join um, local groups, this is the link that you could have. We'll share the slides and then you could easily copy down these links. Next slide. Yes. Questions. And now we're going to open it up to questions. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone is uh, wanting to ask questions. I'm just going to stop the screen share so that we can hopefully. Um, yeah, we can start with some of the questions on the chat. Um, yeah, there is uh, uh, one question. Uh, um, does, does it have tools to upload more than one image at a time? Um, so there's a question on the upload process there. So um, I can answer that. Yes, there, uh, you can um upload up to 20 i think it, it's preferable to upload up to 20 i think there are also um other tools where you can do batch uploading which is called uh, there's one one of which is called commonest um and so we can encourage um but to batch upload so if it's more than 20 then um you can do obviously 20 at a time, so you can do several batches, but if it, you've got like 100 images that you want to upload, then you can do that, but it's probably better to um, work with somebody uh, within the community to help you go via the commonest, which is um, the uh, batch upload special thing. Does that answer the question? Yes, I think it does. Thank you, Ayla. Uh, and then uh, the, there is another question. Um, how do you take beautiful pictures, How do you take uh, beautiful pictures? from from Rashad? 
Okay, so there's um, beautiful pictures are um, about finding an interesting image also and also about framing it. So um, I'm, I, I don't think we should do a masterclass on photography here, but we have got some um, on the website and uh, um, there are some tips on how to uh, frame images and there are actually quite a lot of um, resources all over the internet about how to have um, a very good image or how to create a very good image. But the, for Wikipedia um, and for Wikimedia, the, it's, um, the image shouldn't really be arty. It should be beautifully framed um, as in uh, the thing that you want to capture. So say you're capturing a dragonfly or a train or um, a horse and cart the whole image should be presented. So rather than say, um, do a beautiful picture of the um, eyelashes around the eye of the donkey, rather the whole image so that the, um, the encyclopedic, um, the encyclopedia, what you're trying to, to show or the knowledge that you're trying to present within the, within the visual is captured. Okay. So that's, that's why it's slightly different from, say, a, um, an art photography competition or a um, personality or a, a um, portrait photography competition, because what we're trying to do is capture images of, um, that can illustrate knowledge articles or education articles. Okay? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I think yeah we still have some few questions, and, and I'm, I would like to actually give it uh, give a chance to people who want to unmute to be able also to, um, to unmute and ask their questions. Uh, and Hero uh, Derek, uh, would you like to unmute and ask your question, please? Um, or Sandra Acheng, um, any one of two of you can unmute and ask your question. Hi. Okay. Sandra here yeah, talking. So can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sandra. Yes, so I just want to have a quick question and that is about uh, the prizes for winners. I wanted to get a clear answer on this on how are the prizes in what form is it in form of money or is it in form of prizes yeah so there um just to give you hopefully a quick answer the um prize there are two kind of prize categories so there's the continental prize prizes which is mainly in the form of money there are um four or five categories normally and it's us dollars that is then uh posted directly into the account that you give us. But then there's also, we also provide um, a bag of goodies as well, which change from year to year, but it basically is things like branded caps or um, a, a power pack or um, things like that, or a um, USB port or stuff like that. So just kind of like some fun things as well as money. But some, some communities like to also host their own prize giving sessions. So what we do is we have the big continental prizes, but other, con so other communities across Africa um, can decide to host their own prizes or not. It's up to them. But so say in, and I'm not saying they are doing it, but say in Tunisia, they will host, um, they will run prizes for the images that were taken in that country and then they will have either a separate prize giving which we're not encouraging this year or at least delaying it this year and then if they wish they will give different prizes depending on what they um they feel is um is correct for their context so it could be something like it could be book a book on photography or it could be photographic equipment or we've had vouchers and we've had um, in the past, we've also had um, uh, uh, subscriptions to Photoshop or something like that to a photography, um, online photography um, uh, software. 
So uh, I think that it, it, it just changes according to what the local community wants to provide as prizes. Does that answer your question, Sandra? It does. Thank you so much. You can find on the comments page, um, the enter page, there's a link to, it will tell you what the prize categories are this year. Thank you. Okay. And Does anyone else have a question? To, yes, uh, the hero, Derek. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, for me, my question is, uh, let's say I've added two or three pictures. Am I, and I feel like I should remove any of them, but I have finished the process of uploading. Is it possible for me to remove any of those pictures? That's the first question. Then the second question, um, let's say I have uploaded, uploaded five pictures, and I feel like two of those pictures are lacking a good description, and I feel like I should do something about it. So is it possible to, for me to go back and edit the captions and uh, descriptions of descriptions of pictures I have uploaded. Thank you. Okay, so the um, to answer the the second question first, uh, it is very easy to chain to um, add um, more detail to the descriptions or on your images. Uh, you can either do that by the easiest way to do it is to go to the image page and then add that. And there's also now um, the facility for depicts where you can say uh, if there's, as I was talking about earlier, that um, if they say you've taken a, photog a photograph of a fisherman in the water, you can then add, okay, there is water present. I can see water. I can see wood because the, the canoe is wood. I can see um, a fishing net. And then you can link those to Wikidata statements. So it's a bit, it's more detailed, but it also means there's more efficiency. And if somebody wants an image for a fishing net, then that will come up when they look on Wikidata and then they can come and choose that image and perhaps choose that image. So it allows when somebody is looking for an image, for a, an image for a subject that they can find it easier. So that's, there's definitely a way to do that. And that is very easy on the page of the image that you have already uploaded. Your first question is a little bit more difficult and um, it must, you must really consider the licensing and the image before you upload it. You can, what you can do is say, if you uploaded something with a watermark in it, and then you want to take that watermark out because it won't be considered, you can upload an updated version of um, the image to that page. So if you go down to the bottom of the page, there's an up update this image and you can update something. So if you change it or you want to change the lighting or there's something that you want to make a change to that, you can update it. You can ask for, to delete an image, but you have to motivate why you want to delete it just because you are the, um, the original author it's not always granted and that's because uh, it's when you choose that license you have chosen that license specifically and we hope that you are doing it of your own free will and therefore changing that say it caught i think the only uh, issue that people um, could possibly have is if it was personality a personality right or um, so if somebody if you took a picture of somebody uploaded it and then they said we don't want I don't want that image up there because that's me then they can have that taken down. Isaac do you want to um, leap in there and say something about that? Yes uh, thank you very much uh, Ayla. I think you've um, uh, answered the, the first question correctly but I would just like to add that um, the major reason why your request may not be granted is because Creative Commons licenses are not revocable. So once you release a work under a specific license, you can no longer revoke it because it is assumed that people are already using it. It's possible others have used it off Wikimedia Commons or off Wikimedia Project. And you can't go back again to say, no, I'm not longer using that license. So uh, 
Commons Administrator rarely grants such requests. But if you upload it within minutes, maybe after two or three minutes or five minutes, you want to take it down, then you can request for it to be speedily deleted. Most likely it will be granted because uh, within that short period of time, it's assumed that uh, no one uh, will probably not have used it. So I, I think that's the case. Thank you. Derek, does that answer your question? Yes, uh, I also have another short question on that. Sure. Yes, uh, so uh, is editing a picture before uploading it allowed or I have to upload it the way I've taken it? Because I've been seeing, uh, I have been seeing pictures which are edited using um, Photoshop and so on. So is it allowed or it's not allowed? If I'm editing to what extent should I edit and yeah, that's the question. So what I think you can do, and this is purely my preference, um, it's, it's not a guideline. If you, you know, want to add a filter to it or whatever, then I would do so. But I think what the image itself should stand on its own. So the framing and the impact of the image. I think if you have, you know, if you are Photoshopping, so if you are placing new aspects into the image, then that's, I think, a big no-no. You know, if you're moving things around or trying to make it a, a better picture afterwards, then the, it's the same with most things. If the, if the image isn't good in the first place, like no, no amount really of photo editing will make it a better picture, yeah? So that's the rule of thumb. But if, um, if it's a question of lighting or a question of changing the light or changing the contrast in order to make um, an aspect of the image pop or a certain element within that image to come forward, then that is allowed. And it's not necessarily allowed, it's just good image, um, you know, it's a good image kind of um, development. That's what happens in, um, in dark rooms, it's what happens on Photoshop. But essentially, if, if the image is not good in the first place, like no, very little, um, and there are, yes, there are images that are getting creeping on, which have got, um, which have got uh, um, uh, filters on them. So things from, you know, if you upload via Instagram, you can get certain filters. But to a certain extent, it limits the use of the image that you're, that you're uploading. Because if people want clear images, and yes, it looks fun and interesting on Instagram, but on say an image of a car on on um, on Wikipedia, it won't necessarily add to the to the article, and so therefore it won't necessarily be used. Okay, does that make sense? I mean, to to a certain extent, the reason why we're uploading images is so that they will be used to illustrate articles and other. Um, uh, hello, everyone. I also have a question. This is sure. Boris. Hi, Boris. Yes, uh, yes, I have a question. Um, so I don't know whether it has been it has been clarified or not. So uh, by the first time we were told that this tool, uh, if you try to upload an image that uh, already exists online, it will just um, reject it. Uh, but I'm wondering, I've been seeing some photos uh, which are already online, but which have been able to be uploaded. But uh, yes, like the person who, who, who took that photo that is already existing, uh, just uh, could just take it and upload it for this um, for this contest. So I was uh, the first question would be: so is it okay? So even if the image did exist, uh, existed online, but the person take um, see it as an opportunity since it is related to the contest. Uh, the second one is like: uh, is that tool? Uh, okay, because we are told that it can't uh, allow it, but now it's allowing it. So, is it uh, working or not? Isaac, do you want to talk about copyright violation? Yes, um, I would like to uh, respond. Thank you, Ella. Um, I think your question can can be. Uh, I don't know. First of all, if an image is already existing on common you may not be able to upload the new one because what it means is that you have to override the existing one. But if you're talking about 
images that have been already uploaded to an external website and you want to now upload it to common as part of the context. Yeah, that, that would be a very, very difficult uh, situation because you will first of all have to uh, convince uh, the commons community that you own that photo. And um, it is believed that um, where you, I mean, the external site where that photo has been previously used was probably released under a specific license that may not be compatible with common. So if you um, release that license under the same uh, acceptable license with common, yeah, it could be acceptable provided you can demonstrate or, or prove that you actually own that photo. You can prove that you release it to that website under that uh, license. So it's about license issue. If you release it to an external person or, ask, or upload it to an external website, with the same license that Commons accept, and you can demonstrate that you host that photo, yes, it is acceptable. But if you uploaded it or released it to another website uh, on a license that is not acceptable or compatible with Common license, it will not be accepted. It will be considered as a blatant copyright violation. Generally, for uh, Wikilogs Africa, uh, personally, I'm opposed to. Uh, you know, uploading a, a photo you've already contributed X way under a different licenses. So it has to be content you created and that is original. It's not been shared in any other platform or any license. You know, it's a different thing if you take a photo and it's just there, you've not released it to anybody, you've not used it on a website. Yeah, you can contribute. But once you use it on any, any other website, then you have a difficult time to convince the community that Either you host that website or you release that work under a compatible license with common license. So generally, as a rule of thumb, it's better you upload works that have not been uploaded elsewhere. Thank uh, thanks, Isaac. But uh, let me give you the scenario. So say, for example, I work for maybe a newspaper, allafrica.com. So you know, those um, newspapers, they don't have such kind of things of license. Just put a photo there on a, on a story, and you just write um, in the Isaac okay. Yes. So if that person uses the same photo on commons, why would that not be uh, eligible if the, pass the same person who took the photo and the credits are visible that uh, is the person who took the photo, why would it be not applicable? Yeah, thank you. If if you actually uh, created that photo as part of your job with the newspaper, it is believed that the newspaper holds the copyright, despite the fact that you are still the author. Do you get what I mean? What I mean is, if you are working for that newspaper, and your job is to take photo for them to be used on articles, and you've been paid for that, it is assumed that they own the copyright. But the moral right is reserved. The fact that you uploaded, I mean, you created that work is. Sorry, can you hear Isaac? Because it seems to have his, um, it, it went a bit funny there. Did you understand that, Derek? That essentially, if you are taking, if you are commissioned to take an image by um, an entity and uh, even though the authorship but, pays for you, the, the copyright, because they have bought that image, even if they don't use it, stays with the BBC or whoever it is that you're talking about. But if you want, if you, want to, um, you can then approach them and if they use images particularly that they didn't use, you can approach them and ask them if you can. I don't know, it, a lot of it depends on what your... Um, what your negotiation with that entity is, what agreement with them. Is. Yeah, but if it has been on a on a um, news site like BBC or CNN or Al Jazeera is different because Al Jazeera actually has a Creative Commons licensing, whereas BBC and uh, many of the other news outlets don't. So just check if you are a photojournalist or if you're a journalist in some ways, then rather check with your um, commissioned commissioning editor. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. Any other questions? Thanks, Isaac, for that explanation.
they will come alive. Yeah, I think there's like two more. Um, one actually one, just one more question. Um, is it necessary to provide information on the image in Photoshop, like mm -hmm. titles and descriptions? And that's a question from Eze. So Eze, when you upload your image, um, you will see that there is a space where uh, it asks for a caption, it asks for the title, it asks for a caption, and it asks for a description. And then there is um, further where other depict uh, elements can be included. So uh, in the upload process, you can include those even if you haven't, if they are not included on the file um, in Photoshop. So even if your metadata is not necessarily up to date, Okay. Uh, Infinity Labs, there's a question here, which is um, it's always a complicated process when you want to upload images that you primarily contributed elsewhere, as it can take time for you to trace as to where the copyright imposed in that photograph correlates and is compatible to Wikimedia Commons licensing. So as to, that was, I think Infinity Labs is answering the Derek's question. And I think it's absolutely, just be clear, it's absolutely better to be clear with the, the person who's employing you about what's gonna happen and what should happen should you want to upload it to, um, to Wikimedia or something that say has been rejected to Wikimedia. Mohamed Hoysen, what would you like to say? Um, I can I speak. Yes. Um, okay. Um, I am Mohammed Hussain. Uh, I was uh, last year in um, this uh, contest, and I, I have won the third place. Um, but um, in this year, um, my question is about um, uh, uh, last year that you both sit. Uh, said something like uh, to say that uh, how the image size is can be or uh, the limit of um, the size of the pictures uh, but this year that there is I didn't see anything about um, something to talk about uh, the image of the size size of the image or something like that so uh, how about this, this one okay I think that's a very good question uh, we didn't include um in the image size or minimum a minimum image size but we would very much rather that the image is as large as possible because at the moment um, obviously if you are don donating an image or if you are um, entering an image onto wiki wiki commons it it the idea is that it can be as useful as possible um, and in some cases that use is not necessarily online. It could be placed um, in as being used um, in for print to illustrate articles. So if you have a small 800 pixel um, or smallish image, so anything that's under two megabytes, then um, it's really not worthwhile uh, it, printing. And the clarity of the image is is not very good either normally at a bigger space. So um, in order for the image to be used as widely as possible, then we encourage people have a, contribute larger images. Does that answer your question? We don't penalize people for smaller images, but they don't generally win um, prizes because, um, because they're not as useful, but also because you can't see the detail as well at, at scale. So I maybe I think to I need to re-upload my pictures again. So I I I, re I upload my pictures that as is the last year, um, like three megapixel, four megapixel um, in this range, um, yeah. and I made it like small, like uh, uh, twenty, uh, uh, thirty, like something like that in this size. So I think that I need to re-upload again. <laughs> maybe I think. Because I made it as last year, because as you didn't mention. Yeah, but they don't have to be like math. They don't have to be like AO size. You know what I mean? But they do have to be kind of. Oh, yeah, like like, um, like five, five megapixels or something like that. You mean? Yeah, that would be perfect. That oh, kind okay, of sizing good. around that is perfect. I think it's oh. just anything below two just becomes really not, you know, it's not valuable. 
And it's not that the image isn't valuable, it's just that the its usage, it cannot be used as much as a, as um, a, a more, a larger format, a larger picture can. Yeah, but I, I mean that if you are talking about printing, so I need to upload a much better one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but okay. you can do that, as we said earlier, You, if you go on the image, each individual image page, then you can upload an, um, a version, so you can update the version that you upload. So if, um, uh, it doesn't, you don't, don't have to, as such, you don't have to data. Data. upload a whole new batch. Okay, so uh, as you said, that uh, I can uh, just uh, update data, uh, the same data, but I can only um, uh, um, update the image only. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, any other questions? So I don't know how much more time we can use Ayla, but there is uh, like a few more questions. There's one from Sandra who is saying, uh, uh, how, like what advice can you give to um, like user groups um, like to improve quality from community uh, volunteers who are contributing to the competition? Because, uh, this is a lovely question. It's a lovely question because um, what we have done in other uh, or what other community groups have done is that they have included local photography groups to come in and um, pair up with people within the community. So if you get a local, say there's a, um, a photography group at the, the local university or that there's a photography group in your town, you could ask them to come in and you could do like a, obviously not like we're not doing live events at the moment but when we are both back all back in a world where we can do live events um you could encourage them to come in and give tips and and tricks on how to take photographs but also in order to encourage um better quality from the community members as well as uh, the photographers but also to encourage the photographers to then contribute to does yeah, that answer Mm, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, I just want to add the the quality here. I mean, the maybe the device you're using also matters. But you might have the the skills, but uh, what at what device are you using? Does the community groups um, in different parts of Africa have um, the device that they can use that make the photo come out clearly and of good quality yeah obviously the top end um cell phones are really the only ones you can use in that or obviously the uh, proper cameras um but it's so yeah the device is very important especially for the higher end um most for even images from uh phones are not um are not as good and um as as the ones from proper professional like canons and nikons and things like that so definitely it would be if you can get access to um devices i'm not sure how you would do that within the local context i think that changes from space to space um if you could perhaps um team up with a photography school that might be something to do so that you could have access with um two devices I'm not sure how it works in certain places. So I, I think brainstorming your own context and how you could do that is a really valuable thing. And if you come up with a solution, please let us know, because it's always an, uh, an issue. You know, you, have, you can have the best photographer in the world, but if he doesn't have a camera, he can't take the photograph. So yeah, there's nothing, unfortunately, we can do from our side to facilitate that. Um, a question from uh, from Rashad. Uh, he wants some clarification on uh, the theme, which is transportation. What okay. is it really about? Does a man walking while carrying goods on his head count as an example? Absolutely. So transportation is ranges. So that on the on the uh, Wiki Loves Africa page on Commons, there is actually a whole rundown on the theme itself, um, and the theme itself. It goes from how things are transported, so whether that's 
carrying something on your head or in your arms or on your back or on an animal's back or hitched to an animal or motorized or via water or however or whether it's suspended in the air through um through pulleys however something is carried or transported or however people move around that that is that that's what we want to cover but we also want coverage of um the structures that support that so things like bridges and docks and uh ferries and um all of the elements that allow facilitate people and things to move around so it could be somebody walking down the street but it has to be it's better if it's something somebody with a purpose or showing something specific that's cultural or them carrying something in a specific way that reflects that culture yes is that clear uh, uh, rashid it was your question rashad Yeah, I think that's clear. Um, Does anyone else have a question around the theme? Just one on uh, the date. So, um, as I said, there's photos on his camera, but um, forgot to set the date. So, uh, it shows like default camera date. How can he reconcile all that issue? Sorry, what? Can you repeat that? So, Geoffrey? So the photos have a wrong date um, because the camera date was wrong when he took the photo. Uh, how can okay, he? Okay, in the that? upload wizard. So in the upload wizard, um, you can change the date of the photo of when the photograph. You don't necessarily. You can't necessarily change. It's better for you to change that um, the metadata yourself. So try and get that sorted out. But when you upload the images, it allows you to take um, to to show the date that that image was taken on. So you can give the real date if you wish. Okay, so just when you go and in the upload wizard, there are many different er areas that allow you to kind of like change some of the metadata. So it allows you to change the title, <coughs> to change the file name, it allows you to change the description, and it allows you to change the date. It won't allow you to change like where it's come from, what kind of device was used, but it will allow you to change those elements. Yeah, I'd um, like to add to that. Sorry. Okay. okay. More importantly, the, the context um, does not really care about when you take that photo. It is when you upload it that matters. Even if you upload a photo 20 years ago, you can still contribute it as long as it's within the theme of the of the context and um, uh, it's your original work. You can still con you can still contribute it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be worried about when it was taken. What yeah. matters is did you upload it during the contest? If yes, then you are good to go. Thank you. Yeah, as Isaac said, uh, you can have some historical images. So from a hundred years ago, if your local museum has images from a hundred years ago of kind of roads being built and then those can be uploaded or say pictures that your father took 50 40 years ago those could also be uploaded but again the, you'd have to get the right permission to reflect who took the image and get the permissions for those to be updated but ultimately the photographs don't have to have been taken in the last 30 days they literally have they can be taken at any time but they have to be uploaded during the the competition times Okay, we're going to take two more questions, I think, and then, um, so any more questions? Yeah, two more questions. So one from um, Gabriel, he's asking, he wants to know about the selection process. Um, uh, is it going to be uh, from pictures selected by the user group? Okay, so Gabriel, that's a really good question as well, because uh, it becomes quite confusing. Um, there are two, well, there are parallel jury processes that happen once the, um, the competition ends. There's the continental jury process where we get photographers and people who contribute to commons to, uh, we have a team of between five and 10 jurors who go through all the images and select the images and then come down to the finals. And then the, 
other process is where the um, those community groups who have decided to have a jury process then do their own jury process and they use the category that reflects the images that have been uploaded from their country. And that's a different process that happens. It's a separate process. We, um, as the continental team, we don't have any, um, any control or any, it's not nothing um, that we get involved in, but we are very much involved in the continental side. So basically all of the images that are contributed is the continental prize pot. But if you're say, contributing from Rwanda, then that then the team in Rwanda might decide to have a, an award process and they will then select their own jurors and you can then speak to them about how that selection happens because it might happen different ways depending on which community is doing it so say Tunisia might do it differently to Egypt I don't know okay does that answer your question um so I'm on the team of uh, organizers in Rwanda. Does it stop me from being among the winners in case my upload is among the best? Okay, so if you are, uh, this, is, this is what we encourage to do, uh, people to do, and what we will, um, what's the big, the, the uh, continental team is wanting to do in the next two weeks is hold a meeting with all of the uh, local organizers in order to talk to them about how to, to run the competition uh, locally or the jury locally. But what we do suggest is that if you are a local organizer, that you get an independent jury. So people who are not, who have not necessarily uploaded images um, to be on the jury, because then it means that your images could still be considered. If you are a juror, you would have to then not have your image considered. Just because you can imagine if you won, everyone would just say, ah, what was the point? Yes. So I think just be, to be clear, I think it's good practice for people who are organizers not to be on the jury. And if you have contributed as an organizer, then that also means that you, your image can be considered because the jury is independent from the organizer. Does that make sense? It's a suggestion. It might not necessarily happen like that, but that's something. <coughs> Hello? Yes. Hello? Hi. Okay, Hi. I just want to close to what I just said. Yes, thank you. Uh, generally, it, um, it's not a bad idea to participate in taking photos or contributing photos as part of the contest if you're an organizer. But if you are going to be part of the jury, like I uh, correctly said, you may not be eligible for the local prize because this is because um, people would consider this as uh, conflict of interest and that would definitely reflect poorly on the on the whole uh, competition uh, i mean the integrity and every other things uh, so uh, but basically uh, i think i would generally recommend that organizers should not be eligible for winning the local prize since you are going to still be part of those that will select the jury even though you are not part of the jury but you can actually aim at the international prize. Thank, uh, I'm very happy there are also international prizes for winners. So you can actually aim at that, then you leave the local prize for uh, your local community members. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Okay. Um, and one final question. Geoffrey, is there one final question? Um, yeah, uh, just the last one, we can take this at the last one. Um, sometimes after uploading his photos, Rashad says that he finds that they are deleted. Why are they deleted? Oh, okay, Isaac, maybe you should <laughs> discuss this one. Are, <laughs> thank thank you, thank you very much. Why, why? Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, um, to respond to that, uh, photos are deleted for various reasons. Most, most times, it's usually for copyright violations uh, reasons. If people had reasons to suspect that you're not the copyright holder, which means you're not the author of that uh, photo, uh, 
chances add that they are going to delete it. So uh, I don't know what, uh, what the situation is in your own case. Isaac, but, uh, we're not able to hear uh, you. I think Trishush was the user. Okay, can you hear me now? Uh, hello? Uh, can I contribute? It hasn't been very clear. Can I contribute over here from Ghana? Do hello, you... can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, uh, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, not good, not good, uh, it's, it's stretching. Was that? Photos get deleted for various reasons. Most is it clear? I think you should reposition yourself. No, reposition yourself. The internet is breaking. It's stretching. Yeah, it's it's not sounding good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Is it better now? Okay. Thank you. Uh, what I said was that. Um, Images get deleted for various reasons, but mostly it's, it gets deleted for copyright violation reasons. Uh, for example, if people suspect that um, you are unlikely to be the copyright owner of the work, which means they are not sure if you actually took that photo yourself, you can have it deleted. But the, the, the concern is that um, some people actually delete photos out of process. We can doubt that. But in your own case, I, I don't know uh, the specifics of the reasons, but. Yeah, if I can have your username or the links, generally there will be reasons why they are deleted and they will definitely leave a message on your talk page. Uh, I don't know if I have your username or the links to the deleted uh, uh, photos, I can actually uh, look at it to see if um, the reasons for which uh, they were deleted uh, is actually valid. So if I don't know what's your username, you could actually test it. Uh, Let's see what the situation is. And if there are other people too, who already have their photos deleted, I could have, um, you could actually send your uh, username through the various uh, platform like uh, the Telegraph or here. So we could actually go through to see what the situation is. But mostly I'm pretty sure it's based on copyright uh, problem. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and more also, can I talk please? Hello? Yes, you can talk, Gabriel. Yeah, uh, before the competition began, I heard you put talking about the freedom of panorama. So I, I think maybe where he is, I don't know what might cause that, but if in case he takes the picture in a public place where that particular iconic building or whatsoever is not supposed to be in the picture, it can be nominated for deletion if the freedom of panorama hasn't taken effect in his own country. I think that can also be a reason. Yeah, I think uh, freedom of panorama is a very confusing and uh, difficult area to talk about, but um, it definitely is something that we should talk about. Um, and, um, but not, I don't think here, because it can take another hour <laughs> in order to explain that. I think that's another, um, if anybody is interested in learning about freedom of panorama, I can give you the links to um, articles that will help to explain it. Okay. But in, in short, freedom of panorama means that you might not have um, the right to take photographs of certain buildings or certain um, within your country because uh, the building itself is held within copyright by um, the architect or somebody or an artist. So that can be very difficult and uh, Wikimedia Commons does keep tabs of who has freedom of copyright and, uh, of, of panorama and who doesn't. Uh, but there are ways around it. So uh, Wikilove's Monuments has been working um, working with different countries in order to make sure that sometimes the freedom of panorama can not be circumvented, but can be um, approached properly in the correct way. Okay, so yes, there is a, there is a um, Telegram group. Uh, all of your questions can be transferred to the Telegram group if you have any questions that come up now. Um, I just want to show you that um, on, I'm just going to slide share at 
the moment and show that on the um, the presentation that I did earlier, there is a whole range of different helpful links. So I'm going to um, share the links to the slide on uh, the Telegram group and also again now at the bottom of the chat. But please be careful um, to take that chat quickly because um, it will disappear once we finish this. Okay, so I'm just going to share it with you now. I don't have Telegram. Okay. Um, Telegram is fairly easy, but if you also, if you, I will share it on the, um, Facebook as well. So you can um, link it on Facebook. Is that okay? Facebook is great. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm very, very grateful for you to have been here. I'm very grateful for our team, um, Joffrey and Summer and uh, Candy, for helping explain who loves Africa to you and for people like Isaac and um, Gabriel and others for jumping in and helping with some of the explanations. Thank you so much for being with us, and I hope you have a very safe um, rest of Saturday and that you stay well and hopefully you stay at home. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone.